What's my destiny, Mom? You're gonna have to figure that out for yourself. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. In Forrest Gump, we see two philosophies battling it out. The belief in a destiny ordained by God. We all have a destiny. Nothing just happens. It's all part of a plan. And the idea that you make your own destiny. I happen to believe you make your own destiny. These are two quintessentially American worldviews that are seemingly at odds with each other. I don't know if we each have a destiny or if we're all just floating around accidental like on a breeze. On the one hand, this is a deeply religious country. Even people who don't explicitly worship are likely to show a kind of religiosity in their thinking, as embodied in phrases like, Everything that was meant to happen does. Destiny, in particular, is a key part of our national consciousness. 19th century politics were dominated by the idea of manifest destiny, or the faith that this country's expansion across the American continent was inevitable and preordained. At the same time, most Americans believe in hustling to make something of your life. This is supposed to be the country where anyone can rise to the top through sheer will and ingenuity. That necessitates freedom and an open playing field, both of which come from a degree of chance. Life is a box of chocolates, Forrest. You never know what you're gonna get. In the end, the movie concludes that most likely our lives include both divine influence and randomness. Maybe it's both. And this is embodied in the story's central symbol, the feather, which opens the film and delivers us to our narrator. This little feather appears to embody the presence of both chance and the divine. A feather is just blowing in the wind and could land anywhere. But at the end of the film, the feather merges with the clouds in the sky, as if it's a little piece of heaven blessing our lives. You might say the feather is really opportunity, whether it comes from chance or some kind of god. And that's why it's so significant that the feather is invisible or brushed off by everyone except Forrest. Our destiny is only defined by how we deal with the chance elements to our life. And that's kind of the embodiment of the feather as it comes in, that here is this thing that can land anywhere and that it lands at your feet. It has theological implications that are really huge. When it lands at Forrest's feet, he notices and presses it into his favorite book for safekeeping. At the end, he watches it fly away, as if the feather's work in his life is now complete. The title of the book where he houses the feather, Curious George, captures the way that Forrest himself is open to whatever shows up. How would you like to go into the shrimping business with me? Okay. Most of us, like the other characters in this movie, have heads full of ideas of how things are supposed to go. This wasn't supposed to happen. Not to me. I want to be famous. I want to be a singer like Joe Baez. I'm going into this revenue business for myself after I get out the army. And all this noise blinds us to the moment when we're visited by the feather or the opportunity. So this encapsulates what is really Forrest's greatest gift of all. He's receptive. Good catch, go. You know how to play this? He's present and he listens to people. Just stay a little longer. For some reason, Jenny didn't ever want to go home. Okay, Jenny, I'll stay. Something that very few others in the story do. Pretty much everything he does is a response to something or someone that appears in his life. Have you given any thought to your future? Even when he does take an initiative, it's based on advice from... Run, Forrest! Run! ...or a promise to a person he loves. But now that he's dead, that means I gotta be the captain. Our shrimp boat captain. Yes, sir. A promise is a promise, Lieutenant Diane. Or in response to something they've done. In Forrest, we see a portrait of religiosity, but not in the typical way we tend to think of it. He eventually becomes a church-going man because Lieutenant Dan tells him to. Well, maybe you should just pray for shrimp. Of course, Forrest promptly agrees. So I went to church every Sunday. Allowing the cynical Dan an excuse to attend himself, as he secretly feels the need for spirituality in his life. Sometimes Lieutenant Dan came too, though. I think he left the praying up to me. During the storm, Lieutenant Dan then has an intense argument with his god. It's time for a showdown! You and me! 
after which he seems to have achieved the acceptance he's been craving. He never actually said so, but I think he made his peace with God. Forrest doesn't have a need to worship or speak to an anthropomorphic divine entity, the way Lieutenant Dan conceives of God as a kind of person outside of us. Have you found Jesus yet, no? I didn't know I was supposed to be looking for him, so. He doesn't need to be looking for God because he's already alive to the mysterious heavenly power that weaves in and out of his life. I didn't know it, but I was destined to be your mama. I did the best I could. You did good, Mom. He might make us think of Zen Buddhism, which entails emptying the brain of intellectual ideas that get in the way of mindfulness. Those are the million sparkles on the water. Like that mountain lake that was so clear, Jenny. It looked like there were two skies, one on top of the other. Near the end, Forrest talks about moments when he's felt connected to the presence of heaven on Earth. I couldn't tell where heaven stopped and the earth began. Because he's not overfull with hang-ups about how things ought to be, he's the rare soul who can perceive the way that the miraculous touches our lives all the time. Now, my mom always told me that miracles happen every day. Some people don't think so, but they do. Sometimes this is obvious. Like when, soon after Forrest takes Lieutenant Dan's advice to resort to prayer, a hurricane destroys all the other shrimping boats. In fact, only one shrimping boat actually survived the storm. Louise! Louise, there's Forrest! After that, shrimping was easy. But seeing miracles can also require a little more imagination and interpretation. After young Jenny prays to escape her abusive home life, Dear God, make me a bird so I can fly far, far, far away from here. God doesn't give her exactly what she asks for, but he does seem to answer that prayer. Mama always said that God is mysterious. He didn't turn Jenny into a bird that day. Instead, he had the police say Jenny didn't have to stay in that house no more. The irony is that as his more goal-oriented friends falter, receptive Forrest follows through on their dreams. He becomes the decorated war hero Lieutenant Dan aspired to be. They gave you the Congressional Medal of Honor. Lives Jenny's dream of becoming famous. When I got home, I was a national celebrity. Famous or even in Captain Kangaroo. And launches the extremely successful shrimping business Bubba planned. We've got a whole bunch of boats, 12 Jennies, big old warehouse. We even have hats that say Bubba Gump on them. Because he's driven by loyalty to his loved ones, he's unstoppable when it comes to making his friends' dreams come true. Hey, Bubba, it's me, Forrest Gump. I remember everything you said. And I got it all figured out. Proving the power of seeking a goal out of love versus for self-serving reasons. I gave Bubba's mama Bubba Shea. You know what? She didn't have to work in nobody's kitchen no more. Forrest's openness also wins people over in all kinds of situations, making them open up to him. I remember when that happened. When Wallace got shot, I was in college. So the movie suggests that there's not only an inherent virtue, but also a recipe for success in Forrest's approach. A few months later, they invited me and the ping pong team to visit the White House. So I went, again. We can learn from Forrest how to make the most of our destinies too. Stop being hung up on preconceptions. That was my destiny, and you cheated me out of it and instead be ready to receive. This way we can both better appreciate what we already have and more effectively seize on opportunities that present themselves. Now, hey, folks, all the shrimp you can eat. That's a fine idea. Bubba did have a fine idea. The second big symbol in the story is the box of chocolates, which represents chance and the inherently unfair lottery we're all born into. My mom always said life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. As Forrest recounts his life story to whoever happens to sit next to him on the bench, another element of randomness, we learn that he didn't get the best chocolate out of the box. He's going to have to go to a special school. 
but his back's as crooked as a politician. Is that Mr. Gump? Mrs. Gump? He's on vacation. Whether the point is to forge your destiny or find it, Forrest's story tells us it's crucial to make the most of whatever you're given. You have to do the best with what God gave you. And since Forrest does this, he's rewarded many times over. You do your very best now, Forrest. I sure will, Mama. We have so much to say about Forrest Gump, we decided to make two videos on it. So, in our next video, we'll be talking about why this is a modern American myth, where Forrest embodies the American spirit, and the other characters each represent different aspects of our national identity. So, stay tuned for Forrest Gump, the myth of America. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community we love, with over 25,000 classes taught by seasoned pros. Skillshare has a class on pretty much anything you could want. You can develop your creativity through a class on calligraphy, graphic design, or writing. You can learn to succeed in business with classes on how to make it as a freelancer, market a podcast, or become an Instagram influencer. You can use it to master new technology through classes on web design, coding, and data science, or you can bring that extra flair into your lifestyle, sharpen your knife skills, learn papermaking, speak Spanish, or let Trash Hand, a Chicago-based photographer, teach you the art of street photography. Right now, Skillshare is offering our viewers two months access to all their classes for free. So click the link in the description below to sign up now.